Welcome everyone. My name is Carlos Navia. I'm here for local bartending school. This is the Wednesday weekly learning session. This is December 28th, 2021. We're going to talk about New Year's because we have New Year's Eve coming up here this weekend. And because New Year's Day does fall on a Saturday this year, um, you know, we're going to have a lot of people that are going to go on a four or five day bender. Um, maybe starting today and not finishing till sometime Sunday. Uh, maybe possibly even Monday. Uh, I think it's, it's it's kind of a funny tradition that we have where we go on a six-week bender of drinking and stuffing ourselves full of food, making a bunch of promises that we'll never keep. And then we wake up to start the new year hungover, uh, you know, bloated yet still dehydrated at the same time. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> and, you know, on Saturday, people will be saying, a lot of people will be saying things like, well, you know, the new year really doesn't start till Monday, the first Monday, of the new, and I'll do all that stuff on Monday. And they're going to take the whole weekend off and just enjoy themselves and party anyway. So, you know, do be safe out there. There's going to be a lot of people on the roads. I'm inside again because it is still raining in Central California, and a lot of people across the country might be getting some of this weather as well. It is supposed to be sunny tomorrow, they say, and this weekend. So at least we're supposed to have a nice uh, New Year's Eve, albeit cold for us. Uh, still, you know, nice sun shining. So do be careful out there. If you're drinking, take an Uber, take a Lyft, take a cab. It's just not worth it. It's not worth risking it. There's going to be a lot of crazy people out on the road and you don't want to be the one driving or getting involved in any of that stuff. And, you know, the other thing is it is amateur time. It is amateur hour. You know, there are going to be a lot of people out and not just Friday night, not just on New Year's Eve, but out this entire weekend that don't go out and drink very often and don't know how to handle their alcohol and behave in public. So, you know, this is one of the big ones, New Year's Eve, the other one, St. Patrick's Day that we always talk about. So you do have to be aware of those people, you know, and especially, you know, if you're working at a bar, you're working at a place that's open till midnight, you're going to have people there all night. Uh, you know, be aware that some people don't know how to handle their drinks, um, you know. Casual drinkers, you know, people that go out four or five times a year and drink, they're going to go big um, on Friday night. So you got to be aware of that and keep an eye on people. We don't want anyone to get hurt. You know, um, might find that a lot of them don't make it till midnight, which is common as well. You're going to have a handful of people in any bar that just aren't going to make it. They're going to peak at about 10 o'clock. And by 1030, you might be asking someone to take them home. Um, because they're falling asleep or, or they've just had too much and they're too intoxicated. So that is going to happen. And, you know, people people can't sleep in the bar. You do have to have your eyes open. You do have to be conscious. I have to, have to talk to, you know, a lot of people over the years about it. Um, try to be nice. I usually just approach them nicely. Hey, are you okay? You doing okay over here? Uh, you know, and usually like, oh, what, what? oh no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, second time, <laughs> hey. Uh, you know, you just you got to have your eyes open if you're going to be in here. I can't have you asleep. Uh, and usually that does the trick. If there's a third time, it's like, hey, maybe it's time to go back to your room or go back home because you just can't keep your eyes open and I can't have it. But, you know, just try to be nice about it. Um, you know, th there's going to be people getting cut off. And that's just going into it. You, you got to understand that that's going to be part of it. And you're going to have to cut some people off this weekend. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's in all honesty, most people take it pretty well. You, you do get the person that gets a little belligerent, um, you know, throws a fit. But in most instances, you know, if someone calls me to go out on Friday night and their last image of me is, you know, the last image they have of me that night is me getting kicked out of a bar. Like, I can't believe it. You guys would kick me out of this bar. You know, that person's probably not going to call me Saturday night to go out because it's, it's embarrassing and they don't want to be around that. So most people do take it pretty well. You know, biggest thing you could do, get a manager. You see someone that looks like maybe they've had enough. You see someone that's acting weird. You see someone that's, you know, being you know belligerent or bothering other people, you know, is one of my biggest things, uh, you know, it's probably time to go when you're just over trying to make friends with people that don't want to make friends with you. And you'll get this one. People will be like, can you? And you're like, oh, he's not with you? No, he is absolutely not with us. Can you please get him out of here? So, you know, keep, it, keep an eye on stuff like that. And uh, just remember, we don't know people's tolerance, how much water they have in their system, you know, their mental state, how, how much they drink, um, whether they've had anything to eat. And what else is in their system that's prescription, over-the-counter, or recreational? So just keep an eye on people, you know, and be aware. 
get a manager, let a manager watch it, let a manager take care of it. That's their job. Um, you know, if it's someone at the bar, you got to cut them off, let them have your back. If you see someone, you know, in the bar room, in the restaurant or somewhere that, that probably needs to be cut off, you know, let them go over and handle it. And, and we want to make sure that everybody knows it's not a secret. Everybody knows, hey, no more for the guy in the red shirt or the girl, you know, in, in the blue jeans over there or something like that. We want to make sure that someone else isn't slipping her a drink. She's not ordering a drink, you know, from another a server or going to another bar or some other part of the restaurant and getting drinks. And, and I think the key is, is just to be nice about it. Uh, you know, if you remain calm and, you know, you don't get upset, you don't escalate the situation. You can generally keep people calm, uh, you know, if you remain calm yourselves. If you start to freak out, you start to get loud, the people are going to, you know, respond to that. They're going to freak out and they're going to get loud as well. Um, so be calm, be cool about it. Just, hey, you know, I think you've had enough. I don't think I can serve you anymore. And most people are going to take that pretty well and not freak out. If someone really is getting that belligerent, you know, I've got the manager right there. I've got someone to back me up. And the other thing is, if they really are that drunk to where they're getting that belligerent, maybe they should have been cut off a little earlier. You know, maybe you have already served them too much and, and they probably should have been cut off a drink or two before they got to that level where they were going to be that belligerent. Um, so, you know, just remain calm. Don't escalate the situation. There's going to be a lot going on. A lot of people having a good time. A lot of people partying. We don't want to make anything worse. Um, you know, the other thing you can kind of do in this situation, <clears throat> grab some water real quick. Sometimes it's helpful if you can identify the alpha in a party. And it might not be a man. I don't want to say the alpha male. It could be a man, could be a woman, they're patriarchal, you know, family members, stuff like that. You're gonna have a lot of families going out, a lot of groups going out. A lot of times, if you can identify the alpha in the group, you can see who everybody's gonna to listen to in that group. You can just go to that person and say, hey, you know, I, I need your guy to stop doing this. You know, we don't allow that. And if he continues to do it, I'm sorry, but he has to leave. And they can usually take care of it. Or she's had enough. She's stumbling. You know, she can't be in this bar. It's a liability. She's going to hurt herself. She's going to hurt someone else. You know, can we have someone take her to a room, take her home? You know, you know, something like that. And a lot of times they can get it done much easier because the people are going to listen to them. They're not going to be belligerent with them. They're not going to talk back to them. So if you can identify that alpha in the group and, you know, kind of sometimes go to them. Hey, you know, we can't have this. This is why we can't have it. It can be easier than approaching a drunk person or, or someone that's just being loud, obnoxious, and belligerent anyway. And I will, I will kind of throw this out there too. I cannot tell you how many times I have kicked someone out of a bar to applause, okay? Um, once to a standing ovation. Because someone that's that loud, that belligerent is, is probably upsetting other people as well. And I had one guy here in the Central Coast where I live and there's a fireplace. People sometimes throw logs on the fire. They made too big a fire. The chimney caught fire. And since it's a 30 foot chimney in this giant old building, it was very hard for the fire department to put out. So there's a rule about building the fire. So guy kept throwing logs on the fire. I went over to him nicely and said, hey, excuse me, but I can't have you throw that many logs on the fire because you're going to burn the place down. Um, didn't yell it across the room, nothing, came over, squatted down next to me, sitting on a couch. He's been out wine tasting all day. He is hammered and in there drinking more, waiting for dinner. That's as nice as I was to him, and he loses it. Freaks out, starts screaming, yelling at me, gets up, cussing. I go back behind the bar, and I'm just like, you need to leave. Just, that's it. You need to get out of the bar. Eventually, his wife drags him out of the bar, and I got a standing ovation. Because he was right up there in the front, loud in front of the stage, upsetting everybody, obstructing the band and upsetting, you know, the musicians as well. So don't be afraid to get rid of that person, you know, that's upsetting everybody. Um, make sure we're checking IDs. You know, going to be a lot of young folks out, going to be a lot of families out. Uh, some states, some countries, some cultures have different laws and are more lenient on it. And people feel like when they travel, those laws just travel with them. And that's not the way it works. So, you know, you, you will get people that will buy drinks for, you know, underage people. Um, you come up and ask for three drinks. I need three IDs and I need the people that go with it. Okay. 
Don't walk back up with a handful of IDs and expect me to give you a handful of drinks. I need the people that go with the IDs. I need to see them to ID them. So make sure that you know where the drinks are going. Ultimately, <clears throat> excuse me, ultimately you're responsible for where that drink ends up. And if it ends up in the hands of someone underage, you're gonna be responsible for that if there's a problem. Uh, you know, it, it's the problem though is I have someone my age come up and order four drinks. I'm probably not gonna think anything of it. I'm gonna serve them the four drinks. I'm gonna let them walk away. I go over, I give it to a 19 year old friend of mine. Um, you know, you're still responsible for that. So if you see it happening, you know, once again, get a manager. Biggest thing you can do, easiest thing you can do, get a manager first, let them, you know, go over and handle the situation. But if you have to approach them, once again, be nice about it, be calm about it. Um, I will wait till I see the person actually pick up the drink. Because if they haven't touched it, someone can say, oh, I just said it there. That's not his. So when I see him actually pick it up, I'm going to walk over, tell everybody at the bar, give me a second, walk across the room. Excuse me, do you have your ID on you? No, you don't. I'm sorry, then I have to take this away. Someone at the table is going to go, well, just leave it. I'll drink it. No. I can't leave it uh, by law. It touched the hands of someone that doesn't have identification. By law, I have to take that drink away. I'm not allowed to leave it at the table. Uh, they give you some feedback on that. That's really simple. If you have a problem with this, we can just call the police and you can explain to them that you gave him a drink and that you have a problem with the way I'm handling the situation. Uh, I've only had to say that once, but you know, if it escalates to that, that's the reality of it. You're the one breaking the law, but just be nice about it. You know what you're doing it, um, you know, and get a manager. Uh, uh, and I can't tell you how many times I've done things like grab a server, or grab a manager. Hey, you know, did you ID the person over there with the blue shirt? Like he looks really young to me. Did you see some ID on that guy? It's yes or no. If it's a no, you need to go over there and get it or grab a manager. Hey, does that guy look young to you? Yeah. Hey, you want to go make sure that someone's seen his ID and that someone's checked his ID. So don't be afraid to, you know, grab them and do that. Um, uh, I lost my place on here. Different cultures, kids buy, you know, kids, parents will buy drinks for their kids. And, you know, you gotta be nice about it. Uh, I had a situation here where I worked at a country club and understand that this is a private club. So technically the members all own an interest in the club. They are all my bosses. I can't tell them no. And that's kind of a weird dynamic and it was, it was kind of hard to deal with sometimes. In, in this certain situation, there's a couple, uh, I still see them to this day. My wife actually goes to their house and cuts their hair. The cons, very, very nice folks. They would sit at the bar, have dinner all the time. That's where they like to sit and have dinner. Super nice folks, chatted with them a lot. They had a 19-year-old exchange student staying at their house. One day they came to dinner. They had dinner at the dining room. They were giving wine to the 19-year-old exchange student. He's used to drinking it where he's from. They're used to letting him have it at the house. They really didn't think much about it had to repeatedly go up to them and ask them to stop giving wine to the 19 year old. And they kept arguing, well, this is a private club and it doesn't matter. Um, eventually the third warning actually came to the bar as I, I don't know if I snapped or what kind of happened, but finally I had to get them. And sometimes you can reason with drunk people if you can just make them see. I had to approach them by basically saying, look guys, it's not about you, it's not about me. It's about the liquor license of this country club. And if you do something to upset that, you upset it for the 2,000 members and not just yourselves. So you have a great relationship with the other 2,000 members here. Don't screw it up over something like this. And they said, you know what, you're right. And they stopped and they took the wine away from them. So, you know, just approach them, be calm, reason with them. And, and you can usually get people to you know, do the right thing and do a reasonable thing. Um, also, some people are going to go big. Uh, you know, people are going to order doubles. Most places don't do true doubles. You know, if I'm doing an ounce and a half standard pour, in most places you order a double, I'm going to give you two and a half ounces. Uh, I've only worked at really, oh, take that back. I've worked at a couple places where you wanted to double, you got two full shots and you paid for two full shots. And that was kind of the way they did it and the way they went. There wasn't a discount for doubles, but most places cut it back. And the reason for that is we were trying to slow them down. We're trying to only let you get so drunk. So watch it on the doubles 
And also, you know, watching on the strong drinks, on your Long Islands, your Adios, your Tokyo Teas, you're putting six liquors in um, that people can slam down really quick because they don't taste like alcohol. And, you know, that guy that's got a Long Island in one hand and a beer in the other, just sucking them down, he's going to make some bad decisions. He's probably going to make some bad decisions before it even gets close to midnight. So, you know, be aware of that. Be aware of where these drinks are going as well. Um, I can remember I was working at a place in Florida, a place called AJ's Seafood and Oyster Bar. It's nightclub and bar magazine, editor's choice, top 100 grocery bar in the country every year. Busy, busy place. I'm working a day shift. It is the middle of the day. People are in the restaurant eating lunch. I get a ticket from a server for a Bacardi 151 and Coke. And we would serve it in a little tiny glass. So I just put the ticket down and I waited until the server came over to look for a drink. She's like, where's my drink? And I was like, okay, we're going to have to talk about this. Who ordered a 151 cup? Um, I did not know the table numbers in that restaurant. Still have no idea to this day. The bar was kind of separate. Um, so the woman at the table over there, it was a woman with seven small children, probably 10 years old or less. I'm like, there's no way. The woman with seven children. Um, so I sent the server back over to the table. And the server back, back over the table and spoke with the woman and came back and told me, the woman's situation and it was this three couples go on vacation there every year they rent a house they all bring their kids the adults take turns watching the kids so one adult will watch the kids for several hours and the other five adults can leave and go do adult things it is her turn she brought them there for lunch they're going to be there two hours she's going to have two 151 and cokes and then someone's coming to pick up her and the kids said, this is my drink. I drink it all the time. I'm going to have two. I know that's my limit. And she did. And we served it to her. Um, but, you know, we, we wanted to make sure of the situation. We wanted to make sure of where it was going and what was going on. And, you know, kind of what the situation was with her. And yeah, at first sight, like, heck no, I'm not serving that to some woman with seven children alone over there. She's going to put them in a minivan and drive away from here. Like, no, that's not going to happen. But given her situation, and they did. They stayed in their booth at the restaurant and eventually the, the other five adults showed up and got all the kids and they left and they had a good time and they were very nice people. But, you know, be aware stuff like that comes through and, you know, or you've got, I see a table of four people and I've got, you know, <laughs> 12 shots and, you know, four beers over here. It's like, hey, hey, you know, guys, you're not going to make it to midnight. So, so just be aware, you know, and kind of know what's going on. And the last thing I'll throw out again, if you're lighting anything on the fire, be careful. If you're putting sprinkler, uh, sprinklers, if you're putting sparklers, how about sparklers will go better? If you're putting sparklers in drinks or anything like that, um, bar napkins ignite pretty easy as, long as, as well as other stuff around the bar. Just make sure you're being careful when we're playing with fire so we don't burn anything down. Um, all right, so let's talk then about some cocktails. And oh yeah, I will mention it. We're gonna hear the song, all the Lang song sign. They're gonna keep playing the song <laughs> all New Year's Eve. I had to find out what it meant because I had no idea or what it even really was. So taken from a poem written by Robert Burns, who is the National Poet of Scotland, wrote it in 1788. It literally translates to Old long since. So basically, you can kind of translate it to meaning, you know, time gone by or as time goes, days gone by, you know, something like that. It actually became tied to New Year's in 1929 when a Canadian conductor named Guy Lombardo um, did a internet, uh, internet. 1929. How about a radio spot? Did a radio spot, uh, you know, New Year's Eve 1929 going into 1930. And they played that song in the New Year's Eve and it became a tradition and they kept playing it every New Year's Eve, doing the same um, radio show until it finally went to television and they kept playing it. And that's why it's become a tradition here in North America for us. So got some drinks here, talk about some ideas. Of course, we're gonna do some stuff with some champagne because it's New Year's Eve and you got to have champagne drinks and stuff to go with that as well. So I've got some flutes. Let's start with this flute. I've got some flutes here. Real easy one to do. But I know it's in the book, um, somewhere in like the local bartending school book, although they don't mention the recipe, is a Bellini. And a Bellini is really easy. 
I can just take some apricot puree and put a little of it, about a half an ounce there, in my champagne flute. And then I'm just gonna to top it off with some sparkling wine. I'm not gonna use real champagne here. I'm gonna use some Martinelli's because I don't wanna waste real alcohol, but I will waste some sparkling apple cider because it's much less expensive and it's not alcohol. So if I just do that, take it, top it off, and take my time with it. Like that. Let's put this back on here. And give it a nice little strawberry to garnish it on the side there like that. And we'll take my bar spoon and give it a nice little mix up here and just make sure that's all mixed in there. Excellent. And we have our Bellini. Really easy to do, but you could do it, you know, if you don't have apricot puree, you could do it with some strawberry puree. You could do it with some raspberry puree. You could do it with any kind of puree you got laying around the bar or, you know, anything like that. It makes a cool color. Really easy, cool drink to do. So I'm going to set this off to the side over here. So I talked a little about uh, St. Germain's last week to elderflower liqueur. It seems like I can't look anything up without finding a new St. Germain drink to do. So elderflower liqueur, that probably is going to go good with a little bit of bubbles, with a little bit of uh, champagne. So let's grab a mixing tin and find where my scooper is. Not fill it up too full, just put a little ice in there. We'll do a Saint Germain champagne cocktail. So, I've got my jigger. Let's do, and this is once again just water, not wasting real liquor here, but this will work good for it. One, two, we're gonna do half an ounce of that. I'm gonna do half an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Let's grab us a lemon. So it's good to take the tips off, take the ends off if you're putting in the squeezer. It just makes it a little easier to squeeze. In general, half a lemon, half a lime is going to be about half an ounce. I'm going to squeeze half a lemon into here with my squeezer. If I can get it in here. Just like that. Sideways. All right. Give it a little bit of simple syrup that I have here. I'm gonna do about half an ounce of that. Give this a nice shake. Get nice and mixed up and chilled out there. Do one of these flutes. I found some flutes at Goodwill yesterday <laughs> so i have some new fancy flutes pour this in there it kind of becomes like a saint germain french 75. go ahead and top it off here with our sparkling our bubbles like that Finish it with a nice lemon twist here. All the way around the rim. Squeeze it over the top. Drop it in there. And I've got my St. Germain champagne cocktail. Um, you might see some other brands that say elderflower liqueur. Uh, has been copied already. I have seen a Bowles version of it, BOLS, which is a Dutch company that makes, um, you know, that makes different kind of liqueurs. So any of the flower liqueur will do, or Saint Germain is, is the big one that, that people love. All right, so let's try something a little different that's not in a champagne flute. I like this one's name, and I think it kind of looks cool. So we'll give this one a go. Bright Spirit was what they called it. So if I go back, which we go. Grab a mixing tin here, grab a little bit of ice here. Okay. 
There we go. And let's do some, what do I got that looks like vodka? So if I did three quarters vodka, one, two, three. And I did three quarters of an ounce of raspberry liqueur. So one, two, three, something like razzmatazz, or if you have some Chambord, that'll work. Um, if you don't have either of those two, but you have creme de cassis, um, creme de cassis is made from black currants. They are very similar to black raspberries. You know, you can always use that as a substitute for either one of those if you wanted to do that. So I've got, uh, I've got that stuff in there. Am I missing something though? Raspberry liqueur. Oh yeah. And I thought I'd get some fresh lemon juice. I've still got my lemon here. We're going to squeeze this half lemon in here as well. There we go. All right, we'll give this one a nice shake. That stuff nice and mixed up in there. Get some fresh ice here for a cocktail. that out. I'm going to come back and top it off with, with just some club soda. And if you want to sweet it up, sweeten it up a little bit, you know, you could do a little Sprite, lemon, lime soda, serum, or something like that. So you give it a nice fancy straw. And let's give it a... Uh, Give it a sprig of rosemary in there to look colorful. Like that. And we have our bright spirit cocktail. Like the color, looks nice. You know, a little vodka, vodka, a little lemon, a little raspberry. I got a nice little good taste to it. So got some other ones here. I'll find my place. Now this one. I saw a little while ago, and it's not too hard. I was kind of waiting till we got to uh, New Year's Eve and something champagne and cracking one of these bottles to do it. Poinsettia. So I've seen it just done as a, um, uh, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, I've seen it done as just kind of a mimosa with cranberry juice, but I like the idea of giving it a little bit of Cointreau. Um, like this here. So if I wanted to give this a little mix as well. Let's a little bit of ice in here. I do just about a half ounce of my Cointreau orange liqueur here in there. Cranberry. Let's do about two ounces of this cranberry juice. And try to get it in there. Give it a quick stir. Throw it out a little. Strain it into my flute here. And top it off with our sparkling. You know what? We'll throw another one. Throw a little rosemary in there as well. A little tap on the glass. Drop it in there. So we've got a little green in there. And that is a poinsettia. Good, nice look. Good rug color, great for a little breakfast, uh, uh, you know, Sunday as well, uh, Saturday or Sunday as well. Um, you know, the other thing you're going to see because it's coming on a weekend, you know, Sunday is usually a Bloody Mary day, pretty big Bloody Mary day in both places, but you're going to see it Saturday and Sunday in most bars. People are going to come in, they're going to be ready for that Bloody Mary, they're going to be ready to rock on New Year's Day. Do them the flavor of giving the Bloody Mary a little mix before you send it out to them. There's nothing worse than getting, you know, vodka up to here, mix up to here, and a straw down to the cold vodka. And you get that first sip when you really, really need 
uh, you know, that Bloody Mary to make your day better. So give it a little mix. It, it doesn't take but a second, and it goes a long way for those folks this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. They're going to have, oh, God, massive hangovers uh, from going through the weekend. Okay, this one's going to be good. Let me find what I'm looking for. It's a little glass like this. All right. I called this one the New Year's Sparkler on the uh, – website I saw it on. So what we're going to do is I've got some of these pomegranate arrows, some of these pomegranate seeds. So I'm going to throw two bar spoons of those in there. And do beware if you're working with pomegranates because they will stain. They will stain things. It happens. Um, so just beware. I'm going to give them a nice little crush here, get some fresh pomegranate juice going. I'm going to mash it up pretty good because I'm going to double strain this and make sure that none of these pomegranate seeds or any of the flesh of the pomegranate arrows are going to get into my cocktail. So do it like that. I'm going to go ahead and throw some ice in here. I'm going to get what would be my vodka. And doing this in the bar, trying to do this one at home, go for like a berry vodka. Um, you know, they have some mixed, different kind of mixed berry vodkas as well as, you know, strawberry, raspberry, stuff like that. So if we go ahead and did an ounce here of our berry vodka into our mixing tin, or into our glass, I should say. And gonna go ahead, give that a nice mix in there. Get that vodka mixed up here with my pumpkin. Right. And I'm going to grab my flute here. And we are going to double strain this one and make sure that we're getting all those seeds, getting all those arrows out, and try not to spill it on the bar. Getting all that stuff out, getting it in there. So. And then we're going to come back again and top it off with some champagne. Leave a little room here so that I can come back with my pomegranate seeds. Just drop a couple in there. So I've got a couple drop into the bottom. Like that into the bottom. And we have our New Year Sparkler. Put a little pomegranate juice and a little berry vodka in there. Ah, there you go. And you can see the seeds coming back up to the top, giving it a nice effect. All right. So I'm lining up some champagne drinks. Let's try one that's not champagne uh, again and give it, give it a little different go here. Get this stuff cleaned up real quickly. So I think I, uh, you know, I'm also gonna stir this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pint glass. That should be pretty good. So we're going to do here a maple whiskey sour. Almost kind of screwed that up. Maple whiskey sour. So on my glass here, need some whiskey. I'm going to go ahead to my handy dandy Jack Daniels. I'm going to do two ounces of that. One, two, three, four. Into my mixing tin there or my mixing glass here. As I said, um, we're going to go ahead and do, once again, some fresh lemon juice. So I will grab another lemon here. There it is. Take the ends off. Cut it in half. There we go. Come on, buddy. Put it in there. Yeah, if I can get the lemon into my squeezer. There we go. All right. So we're going to do our half ounce of fresh lemon juice in here for our whiskey sour. Get 
like that. And then to give it maple, we would do some maple syrup. Well, first, I'm going to give it some simple syrup. So I'm going to do about a half ounce of my simple syrup as well. Like that. And then to make it mapley, we would do a, about a bar spoon here of some maple syrup. Um, if you recognize the bottle, which I'm not going to turn the label, um, you realize this is not really maple syrup, but it'll work well for, for our purposes uh, here. It will work just fine. So we'll put a nice big bar spoon down of maple syrup in there as well. Go ahead, we'll give that a nice mix and let that all get together and mix up. There we go, get that syrup to dissolve in there into my cocktail. And grab a bucket glass. And we'll give it a nice cherry. Nice cherry in there. Couple straws, napkin. We've got our maple whiskey sour there, strained out over some fresh rocks. All right, so where am I at time? Okay, got time. I want to do one more. Um, you now we start talking about champagne drinks. It is hard not to talk about a French 75, but I made, made some colored water here that I want to resemble Empress Gin. If you're not familiar with Empress Gin, it is Canadian gin. It comes from British Columbia, Canada, from Victoria. It is named after the, or it is inspired by, I should say, see if I can share this shot. Do I have a shot? Here's a picture of it. Looks like this. It's a purple gin. It's inspired by the Empress Hotel in, uh, in British Columbia. And um, it, it's very cool. They're making a red, white, and blue cocktail here. They call it a red, white, and blue uh, gin and tonic. I believe that's what it was, or sorry, yeah, gin and tonic. Uh, if you're kind of curious what that was, I'm not sure what they used for the red in it. Um, but a very good gin, very popular. You know, you mix it with a uh, fever tree tonic, squeeze a lime in there, it kind of turns blue. Um, I don't know, I really didn't see anything miraculous about it. But guys at the country club would stand around, ooh, it's turning blue. I, they're happy, I'm happy. That was all that's about it. But it's, it's uh, made with... I'm sure I've got it on here as well. Fairmont Empress Tea from the Empress Hotel in Vancouver, British Columbia. Juniper, which um, juniper is also what they use to flavor uh, tangare that gives it the kind of piney smell and piney taste to it. Coriander seeds, rose petals, cinnamon bark, ginger root, and butterfly pea blossoms, which is what gives it that purple color. So that's what they're using to flavor it. I think it would make a great French 75 and go excellent in a French 75. So let's go ahead and do our Empress French 75 here. So I'm gonna grab my handy dandy mixing tin. Gonna get some ice first. Steps. A little bit more ice in there. That should be perfect. I'm going to do our ounce and a half here of Empress purple looking gin. That should suffice right there. I'm going to go ahead and do a half ounce of fresh lemon juice again in there as well. This lemon in here. There we go. Got my fresh lemon juice in there. Right. So I'm going to close this real quick. 
All right, so I've got my half ounce fresh lemon juice. I've got my ounce and a half of Empress Gin in there, but I also need my sugar. So I'm going to do a half ounce here of my simple syrup in there as well. Go ahead and give this a nice shake up here. Put it in there. Let's shake nicely. And then mix it up. A little smack there, let it trip out. Grab my screen, pour it nicely into my champagne flute here. Nice purple color. There we go. And then, of course, come back with our bubbles. Top it off there. And then, of course, we're going to have to finish this one off again with a nice lemon twist. Just like this. And remember, we're taking the outside of the peel so we get the essence and the oils from the outside of the peel all the way around on the rim of the glass. Then we're squeezing it over, getting the oils out on top of the drink, dropping it in there. So I have the oils on the rim of the glass. When the person puts their lips to it, they're going to taste those oils. I also have it over the top of the glass. So when the person brings it up to their face, they will smell those oils coming off of it. And that is our Empress French 75. Great cocktail to ring in the new year and have a good time and have some fun. So, um... Are there any questions? I don't think there are any questions about anything necessarily the one I just answered. All right. Well, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you have a fun and safe, uh, you know, last three days here of the year as we go into 2022. Um, hopefully, you know, we will have a fantastic 2022, get this kind of COVID stuff sorted out possibly, and, uh, you know, we'll be able to return to life as normal. But otherwise, you know, while we're still dealing with this, be safe while you're out there, you know, wear your mask if that's required where you live. Also, once again, you know, there's going to be some inclement weather, you know, in some places as well. There's going to be a lot of people on the highways. Take a lift, take, take an Uber, you know, be safe out there if you're driving, you know, be sober out there if you're driving. So thank you all very much. I will see you next week in the new year. And we will talk about, I don't know best New Year's hangovers or how to keep your resolutions or something like that. Thank you very much and have a great week. We'll see you next week.